Hi and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about linear combinations of vectors. So if we start with some vectors, v1 through vn, and then we take some scalars, c1 through cn, then a linear combination of the vectors is the following. So we would do c1 times v1, we've taken that first scalar times the first vector, plus c2 times v2, second scalar times the second vector, and we would keep adding these until we add cn times vn, so the last scalar times the last vector. So this linear combination just takes all of the vectors and multiplies each of them by a scalar. Those scalars can be anything we want. We think of them usually as real numbers. And by doing this, we get a result that is also a vector. So we've taken a bunch of vectors and added them together. And this new vector is our linear combination. Additionally, we have a special name for the C1 through Cn values. We call these the weights of the combination. You can think of them as determining how much of each vector we're taking into account. So we would take C1 times the first vector, that C value decides how much we scale the first vector. Then we would take C2 times the second vector, that one decides how much of the second vector we take, and so on. So just as we've done systems of linear equations, we're going to upgrade this now and start looking at linear combinations. So we're taking vectors and doing a linear combination of them, which is our vector equivalent of the system of linear equations. This has a lot of applications. You can imagine in any context where we have a bunch of variables we're considering, those would be our vectors, and we want to take a certain amount of each of those variables and add them together in some way. But for now, let's just look at some more abstract examples and explore how this works. So for our first example, let's find weights c1 and c2 such that the vector b equals 5 and negative 2 is a linear combination of the vectors v1 equals 1, negative 1, and v2 equals 9, 0. Okay, so we're saying I have a desired outcome, I have my b value, that's the vector I want to be a linear combination of these other two, and we need to find appropriate weights to make this true. So what this is saying mathematically is that we want C1 V1 plus C2 V2 to be equal to B. So we have our vectors to go in the locations in this equation, and we're just going to try to solve for our C values, our weights. So let's use what we know about vectors to try to do this. So if I have C1 times my first vector plus C2 times my second vector, those C values are scalars, so we can distribute them into the matrices. So I have C1 and negative C1 in my first vector, and 9C2, 0C2 in my second vector. Then I can add vectors by just adding the corresponding elements. So in my first row I have C1 plus 9C2, and in my second row I just have negative C1, since I'm adding 0C2. Okay, so I'm left with this new equation. I have C1 plus 9C2 and negative C1 is equal to the matrix 5, negative 2. Since these two vectors are equal, we know their components must be equal, and so this is actually just related to a system of equations. Specifically, we can write that the first rows are equal, so C1 plus 9C2 equals 5, and then the second row is equal negative c1 equals negative 2. So after all of this, we actually just ended up with a system of linear equations. We started with a vector equation that involved a linear combination, and now we've ended up with a system of linear equations. So at this point, we can pretty clearly see that c1 is 2, and then you could solve for c2. You could totally do that in just the normal substitution way. But this is linear algebra, and so we're going to do this by looking at a matrix. Specifically, we're just looking at two variables right now, but we really want to know how this works when we start working with way more variables. So this is good to just go through it in the way that we'll do it when we have more variables. So solving a linear system is equivalent to row reducing the corresponding augmented matrix. So I'm going to take this new system we have and write it as a matrix. 
I'm looking at the coefficients on my C values. So in the first row, I have 1, 9, and then I want that to be equal to 5. And in the second row, I have negative 1 and 0, and I want that to be negative 2. So I'm taking the coefficients and the B value on the right-hand side of the equal sign and putting it into this augmented matrix. So here, the first column corresponds to the C1 values, and the second column corresponds to the C2 values. But you might notice that these are actually just the column vectors we started with. So this first column is V1, and the second column is V2. So really, we kind of unpacked the linear combination, and we just ended up with this matrix that we could have assembled by putting together the vectors that we started with. We're going to now row reduce this to find the values that we're looking for. So we're basically taking this system and solving it, and we should end up with our C1 and our C2 values once we have this in reduced row echelon form. Okay, so this is just our first example. We'll unpack this more in a separate video with more examples, so bear with me. We're just sort of unpacking the process right now. All right, we're going to row reduce. I totally support you using technology to do this row reduction if you want, but at this point in the series of videos, we're still pretty new with row reduction, so I'm going to use this as another opportunity for an example and go through the steps. If you want some practice with row reduction, you can pause it right now and give it a shot on your own, then come back and we'll do it together. Otherwise, you can follow through with me as I do it. Or if you really don't care too much, you can just skip ahead a little bit and get to this solved matrix. Okay, so I'm seeing here that I need a zero in the lower left, and so I want to get that negative one to become a zero. I'm going to do row one plus row two and make that my new row two. So I do one plus negative one, nine plus zero, and five plus negative two in my second row. When I simplify this, I'm getting my second row to be zero, nine, three. So I have the one in the leading position I want, I have a zero below it, and now I need a one in the second column. So that nine is going to become a one, that's what I want to happen. To do that, I'm just going to take that second row and divide it by nine. So I'm going to do one ninth of the second row, and this is going to be my new row two. When I do this, I'm getting zero, one, and one third, and now we're almost there. So to get to reduced row echelon form, I need that nine to be a zero. And to do that, I'm going to take my first row and subtract nine of the second row to make that my new row one. Okay, so when I do this, we do one minus zero, nine minus nine, and five minus nine thirds. So I'm doing nine times one third. So I'm getting one, zero, and when I do this, 9 thirds is just 3, so I'm doing 5 minus 3, which is 2. And there we go. So I now I have my reduced row echelon form for this matrix. From this, we get our solutions. Remember, we're trying to find the weights C1 and C2. Again, this might be super fast since it's two-dimensional, and we probably could have solved this problem a different way. But remember, our goal is to be able to repeat this process when we have a lot more variables and it'd be way more complicated. Okay, so from the matrix, we can now find our solutions. The first row relates back to the equation 1C1 plus 0C2 equals 2. And the second row is 0C1 plus 1C2 equals 1 third. And from this, we get that our first weight, C1, is 2 and the second weight, C2, is one-third. And there we go. That would be our final answer to this question that we were posed at the beginning, which was to find the weights that make the linear combination work. Just to really bring it back to where we started, let's check our work and you can see why we found these weights and make sure that it makes sense why they were working. So our goal was to start with this vector equation and find values C1 and C2 that made it true. Truthfully, I think you probably could have just sat here and guessed for a while and came up with the right numbers. But the point is, as I keep mentioning, that we want to be able to do this when we have higher dimensions and more things to keep track of, and we couldn't just do it in our head. So when I replace C1 and C2 with the values I now have, which are 2 and 1 third, we want to just simplify and make sure we're getting a true statement. 
So I'll distribute the two, I'm getting two and negative two. And then I distribute the one third, I'm getting three and zero. Then I add the corresponding elements. So my first row is two plus three, and my second row is negative two plus zero. When I simplify this, I'm getting five and negative two, and that is equal to what we wanted it to be. So these weights work, they create the linear combination we were looking for. Okay, so from this process, we're going to summarize a theorem that really captures what we did and how to apply it in other situations. We can say that a vector B is a linear combination of the vectors V1 through Vn if and only if the augmented matrix, where we have the vectors as the column vectors, and then we have on the right-hand side of that vertical bar, we have the B. So B is a linear combination of these vectors if and only if this matrix corresponds to a consistent system of linear equations. So, okay, we should be able to put all of the vectors in a matrix in this way, row reduce it, and determine if we have a consistent system or not. If we have a consistent system, then we can write B as a linear combination. Okay, let's unpack this a little bit. So what this means is that we have equivalent sort of questions that we could be asking here. So we can ask, is B a linear combination of the vectors V1 through Vn? And this is now equivalent to the question, find the reduced row echelon form for the matrix made from the vectors V1 through Vn augmented with the vector B. So if we find reduced row echelon form, we can determine whether or not we can write a linear combination. When we do this row reduction, if we end up with a system that is inconsistent, then B is not a linear combination of the vectors. This basically means that there's no solution we can come up with for our weights, our C values, that make a linear combination. There's just no way to do it. And here it's good to remember what an inconsistent system looks like. So inconsistent systems, when we row reduce, will end up with a row that is false. So you'll be going about your row reduction and you'll end up with a statement that looks like zeros on the left-hand side and a non-zero value on the right-hand side. And this corresponds to a false statement. This false statement lets you know that we're in an inconsistent situation, we have an inconsistent system, and so our vectors cannot be written as a linear combination to get our vector B. So all of this to say that we have a new application for our row reduction and for our augmented matrices, we can now answer questions about linear combinations. I have another video where we'll go through a bunch of more examples of how this looks and how we do this process, but that's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.